delighted to say I joined the McLean's TV, quite interesting, by the Linfield manager Warren Feeney with the McLean backdrop. And of course, Warren, they're the sponsors of your big rivals, Glen Torn. Yes, I see they are my big rivals. Um, we were lucky to have them second game of the season. It was a great atmosphere. And it's also good to be here, um, getting a chat with obviously you on behalf of McLean's. Look, you have uh, 46 caps for Northern Ireland, five goals. You've uh, had more clubs than Jack Nicholas when you think about <laughs> some of the clubs you've gone through. And now you've come back to manage Linfield. Would it be fair to say, if you'd have been offered any other job, with no disrespect to any of the other Irish League clubs, this was the job that you, that you said yes to? I thought you were going to say there are more clubs than one of the Koopmans, McLean Health. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, clubs. But no, it's a great job for me. It's one that I would never um, have turned down. It's the only club I would have definitely come back to Northern Ireland for because I know their history. Um, I was a supporter as a boy. Fantastic club. Their identities winning trophies. Um, and it's something that I think, you know, hopefully I can do myself and, and progress my career at this football club. Interesting, uh, we spoke a few months ago and we were in the company of Liam Beckett who always maintained that the Linfield fans should have patience because you're coming into this new job, high profile, the hot seat at Windsor Park and yet, you know, you're right up there. You must be very, very pleased. You know, you've done it your way and yet you're right up there at the very top. No, it is. It went through a transition where, you know, you want to bring in your own players. Um, I looked at the squad and I want to get a mixture of youth and experience. Obviously, it's not nice. Players have to go. Players come in. That's football. But you know, I'm pleased with what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm slowly, you know, getting it right. We're going to get better, and I don't think we're too far away. And it's an open league at the moment, as you can see. Um, no one wants to run away with it yet, and we're only in October. But you know, if I believe in my players, what I've got in this changing room, you know, I think we'll be there, or thereabouts at the end of the season. Warren. Uh you brought a wee bit of stick on yourself at the very start because a lot of what I would call some established players were ones that you decided no, their time is up at Windsor Park. It was a difficult decision to make. It was, um, but you know, I've, I'm a believer you've got to be ruthless as a manager and I've got to assess what I want in my team. And you know, I've worked under some fantastic managers and you know, I can tell you now they're not nice. Um, you know, at the end of the day, they have a job, they've got to look after the football club and what they want. Whether you fit in that, whether you don't, you know, you make the decision, it's on your head. And, you know, I looked at it and some of them had fantastic careers for the Blues, you know, won medals. But sometimes you can go a little bit stale and it's maybe good to move on. And, you know, in my opinion, um, as I say, I wanted a squad that I think can compete and capable of winning trophies. And, you know, I stick by what I've done. Are you surprised that you've done so well at this early stage? I think I could, I'd be glad to do a little bit better, to be honest. Um, you know, you always set a standard high, but, you know, you're looking at, I got rid of, what, 11 players, brought in eight, and, you know, new players, some haven't been here, coming back across the water. And, you know, someone said to me the other day, for where we are at the moment, I'd have snapped your right hand off. Um, but I believe in letting other people talk, and, you know, I know what's in that change room. I've just got to believe what them players, you know, see them in training three nights a week and see what they can do. and. You know, as I say, I'm pleased with the way it's going. You've always <laughs> worn your heart in your sleeve and you've played at the very highest level, so I'll ask you for a very honest uh, a very honest answer to this one. The Irish League is much maligned by people who don't even go to watch the game. I do watch the game. I enjoy it. I think the standard this year has been exceptional. And I do think the crowds are up as well. Would you agree? Definitely. I think you know what I mean. I always kept an eye when I was in England. <laughs> um, but, you know, you have some fantastic players over here so who I think would get a good career in the lower leagues in England, I've no doubt about that. And you should say, you look at the leagues now, you know, Cliftonville's dominance there for the last two years, back-to-back -back trophies. Um, you've got a fantastic club and a big club in Glen Town. You've got us, you've got Porter there, and there's Gary Hamlin's Glen Avon. It's, you know, it's in Crusaders, obviously. There's a lot of teams that are competing um, for this league in Silverware. And our Gary won the, the Irish Cup last year, was at the final. And, you know, it, it's great to see teams outside of Belfast as well, um, you know, really making a name for themselves. And it's one that, you know, you want crowds back at the games. I remember going as a kid with my father and, you know, always remember the Boxing Day game against the big rivals, Glenn Turner's 14, 15,000 there. And I'm hoping, you know, we'll get that this year because they're the games you want to play in, the big games with the big fans. And it's, it can only be good for local football. Player, manager, is that difficult? It is. It is because, you know, you're looking over... Um, picture a helicopter, you're hovering 
above it all trying to do everything but you know I've got a good staff around me I've got good people at the club who help me and I'm open to opinions and obviously I love playing myself uh, but you know I've said to my strikers you just keep scoring goals and you know keep us out of the team keep winning games but you know it's, it's something that I'll assess what games I will play and what games I won't play um, but no it's, it's always nice you know I'll always register myself in case I need called upon and you know, it is a difficult one. That day is going to come when I will have to hang up my boots, but hopefully it's not going to be for a long time yet. Who makes the call when you're a player manager and you're out maybe 10 minutes into the second half and you're having a particularly bad day? Do you make the call on yourself or does some of the boys on the line go, hey, Warren, Mon, early charge on? <laughs> well, it happened this season <laughs> once. Um, you know, I, I got brought off. And I says, hold on, I got off. Luckily, we won. I says, hold on, who made that call? And I went, oh, I thought your legs had gone. I went, legs had gone. <laughs> but no, you know, I've got, I've got good staff there. I've got Andy Todd, who's got a lot of experience from playing the Premier League. I've got Alfie, who's experienced with international over here. And, you know, even, even through the, the kit man, I, I like to keep us all as a family, right up to the physio and, and everyone. And it is, it is difficult. Um, but, you know, you've got to listen to their opinions on the side. What's best for the team? It's not about individuals. And they... Um, you know, it would have been interesting we won the game, but if I hadn't, I'm sure I'd have been pulling the hair out of the changing room. <laughs> I thought that, I'd love to be a fly on the wall <laughs> if you had a lost the game to see what you would have said to them too. But I want to go back to the fact about the Irish League. Uh, at the start of the season, a lot of pundits, including myself and a few others, felt it was going to be the, the tightest and closest Irish League in a long time. The Danske Band Premiership has proven that this season already. Definitely, you know, you're, the teams, I think there's been, what, four or five different leaders already this season. Um, you know, it was a tough one for me personally coming home because a lot of journalists, which they rightly so, you know, were saying rookie this, rookie that. But, you know, I've been in England for 17, 18 years in my football career. Um, I've worked in a day-to-day -day surroundings. I know what, what football is and what I want. And, you know, coming in, looking at it for the last lot of years, you know, as I said, you Cliftonville's back-to-back -back titles, um, other teams coming up and it is a tough league, a very tough league and it's, I think it's one of them who ever can go on to win four, five, six um, and get a wee gap, you know, might do something but any team up around there until Christmas time, you know, it's, it's one that you could throw a blanket over everyone, um, down to six, seven teams and you know, it's, it's going to be exciting and it's, it's one that, as I say, whether you don't want to be top now, it's top come that end of the season, um, it's going to be the winners. Or an interesting, you know, for my sins, for McLean's, I would do Premier League predictions each week. You know, just for a bit of fun, I would do Irish League predictions. Mm -hmm. The Premier <clears throat> League is easier. The Irish League is so difficult to call because there's teams taking points off each other and getting victories that are totally unexpected. Which just adds to what you're saying. It's just going to be a very, very difficult league to win. It is. It's, it's you know, everyone can beat each other, which is good. Um, you know, Linfield's dominance years ago, you know, with a, with a, was it six doubles in seven years? Um, you've got you know teams teams up against it now. Teams bringing players through, getting players in, and you know it's exciting. It is, and as you say in the Premier League, Man United is going through a transition at the moment. They're you know they've went to teams West Brom, even they're Drew. Um, so it's it's it can only be good for us. It's you know as I said, these six seven teams throw a blanket over them. Who's going to be the big ones at the end of the day? It's the team that's going to have that mentality of winning, that desire. Um, and you know who, who's who's strong enough to have their mentalities of winning football games that'll win this league. You're talking about the league, and obviously you're in the you're following the footsteps of David Jeffrey. You talk about doubles almost came second. Uh, they, they, they were second or common knowledge uh, and uh, normal seasons up at Linfield. So can I ask you now, as the new man, the rookie, as they, as they, they want to call it, you've sort of got your feet uh, wet a wee bit at this stage. What will be a good season for Linfield? I mean, for you. Not for a lot of the fans yep. who think you should win every game five nil every single week. Yep, I, I know it is. Obviously, it's, it comes with the pressure of Linfield. Um, you know, I set my standards, and I've always says, look, I don't like the, the, you know, talk about us too much because it's what I believe in those players in that change rooms. But you know, obviously, you want to go and win the league. Of course, you do. Everyone wants to win the league. But you know, I, I want to see a progression. Uh, me personally, I want to win trophies. That's the way I've been, and as I say, it's Linfield's identity. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm confident, I'm confident, you know, we can't do that. As I say, we'll be there or thereabouts at the end of the season. And you know, I've just got to keep believing. Um, 
and what them players have. And you know, I want silverware definitely. That's what I've set my target for this season. Now, some people mightn't realise the fact that you're over here now, your family are still in England, so that sacrifice alone is incredible to take up this role as the boss of Linfield. Has that been difficult for you? It is. Obviously, my wife and my family have supported me my whole career. Um, I've moved up and down the country numerous times. But, you know, stable. My wife's got a great job over there in England. Um, but it's one that, you know, if all goes well, we will be, we'll be settling over here. Um, I have a couple of houses in England, which I'll still keep because, you know what I mean, you never say never. Um, you know, it's been a big part of my life over there. But as I said, this moment in time, my focus is on Linfield and my family, you know, fully support me in that way. Are you enjoying it? I really love it. Really love it. You know, I do it my way, my way only. And obviously there's going to be ups and downs in the season. Um, but, you know, I, I won't get carried away when when. I don't get down when we lose. I try to stay level-headed, and you know I've got enough, enough pros, ex-pros who I really look upon to, to to pick the phone up and chat to, um, and give me support. Are you surprised the fact whenever you come home, you know the stick you would get, you know that goes with being the Linfield manager. Everybody knows you because you're the Linfield manager. You have people who adore you because you're the Linfield manager, and other people who will just hate you. They don't even know you. They don't even know you. You know, because I have to say, folks, you're terrible, decent, terrible, nice lad. But somebody will hate you because you're the Linfield boss. Yeah, it just comes along with it. You know, it's funny because probably playing for Northern Ireland, you'd have. You know, supporters of other teams support you, but now they're shouting at you. Uh, <laughs> uh, but no, uh, you know, I, I like to think that we That's are. Tommy Bradley, <laughs> my behaviour, come on. <laughs> I like to think that we are, we are the biggest club, and you know, everyone wants to beat Linfield down. But I knew this um, whenever I come over here. Um, you know, it's one that I've just got to deal with. I deal it my own way, and you know, one that listen, people have their opinions. And the can some things are said, but look, I don't take no notice of it. I just get my head down and get on my job, and look, I'll get on with everyone, um, because well, I think it's important. But you know what I mean. If people cross me, I do have that little side of me which I think you need, and you know you've got to have bulletproof wings as a manager. You've just got to put your Harry Potter cloak on, as I say, and you know focus on what you want to do and let other people do the talk. And if people, you know, are going to give you a stick, then I think you're obviously doing something right because, you know. As I say, all news is good news, and if people want to talk about you, just let them. Warren, I have to say thank you very much, Steve. It's fantastic you joined us here in McLean TV. I wish you all the very, uh, very best and the best of success. I know you'll do a good job at Linfield. Thanks very much. Thank you.